Good morning, Jessica. How are you doing today? Good. Good morning. How are you? I'm really good. Happy to be here. Great, great. So this morning, we're going to get into some subject to investing, subject to real estate investing. Yes, we get this topic come up quite a bit. So I'm happy to give you my input on that. Before we get started, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes. Uh, so I'm an attorney in New York. Uh, I'm up in the Hudson Valley. We're about an hour and a half north of New York City, uh, about an hour and a half south of Albany. So I'm in a really central location. Um, and I'm a trial attorney by background. So I'm a litigation attorney. Uh, so I tend to take all of my experiences uh, and turn it into what not to do to help people prevent themselves from getting sued or, you know, having claims against them. So I do a lot of consulting for landlords and real estate investors. Um, and I do a lot of estate planning because I think it's really important for real estate investors to combine their business side with, you know, estate planning for the next generation and how to protect what you work so hard for. Right. So I think uh, I, I started about four years ago investing myself as another form of sort of another bucket for my retirement. You know, I do the traditional investing, but I've always been around real estate. It's sort of uh, in my family background. And I figured I'm going to start small um, and see if I like it and go from there. And, and it's been great. And I'm slowly building up my, my properties. And, and so that hands-on experience also helps me then combine my, my, you know, real life experience for landlords and real estate investors as well for the legal piece. That's great. So have you done any subject two deals yourself? So I haven't myself, I've been looking for them. Um, where I am right now in the Hudson Valley, it's a hot market. You, you know, it is really hard to, um, to get a good deal. So the subject to is such a good option, but you really have to either have the time to do the legwork yourself to find it, right. or you have to hire somebody to be doing the legwork to find it. Right. Cause they're definitely out there. Um, but I work full time. In addition to my law practice, I teach at the community college. Um, and, you know, and then I have my family and my kids. So I just, I don't have the time to really find one. If it falls into my lap, I'd be thrilled. Yeah. Um, but I see people having the most success with it by actively making that their business model. You know, you have to put in the time and the effort to find that owner who's willing to do the subject to deal. Right. Um, so it's on it's on my wish list of things to do, but I haven't been able to find one just yet. So I get I get a lot of questions from some of my students across the country, and they want to know are subject twos legal? Yes. Okay. So the subject two is brilliant. I think if you can find somebody willing to do it, it's fantastic because again, you, it's another way of using someone else's money to buy your investment. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, it, it is not illegal. Okay. Basically what it breaks down to is as a seller, I'm selling you the property, but I'm willing to keep the debt. Okay. This is right. why it's so risky actually for the seller, it's not risky for the buyer. Right. You know, um, uh, so I'm going to keep this debt in my name, but I'm giving you the deed. Okay. And so you're going to pay me money for this marketable thing that I have, which is an existing financing, a mortgage of some kind. So where people get caught up is in every bank document, there's something called the due on sale clause. And everybody's heard of it. Nobody really understands it or they're afraid of it. And really all it says is that the bank has the option. Bank has the right to recall this loan if you sell the property to somebody else. Because remember, when this bank sold the property to the seller, they did the credit check and the background checks and looked at their pay stubs and looked to make sure that they could really pay this mortgage. Right. If that seller sells it to somebody else, they have no clue whether or not this new buyer can afford this mortgage. Is, there, is this buyer going to make the payments? So that due on sale clause gives the bank the opportunity to say, 
um, I want you to pay my note in full because I don't trust that you're going to pay it. I don't know who you are. I didn't screen you. And now I'm going to exercise that option. But what's important to realize is it's not mandatory. The language doesn't say must. It gives them the option. They can call in the note if they choose to. So part of the background to understand is why. Why would they bank want to do it? The bank would do it if they thought they were going to make money from that deal. Yeah. Okay? If, if the interest rate at the time was really low, let's say the interest rate was 2.5%, and now the interest rates are 6.5%, then yes, they want to refinance. They want to call in that note so that they can make more money on that interest. But if the rate is substantially the same and the, the mortgage is being paid every month anyway, typically the bank doesn't care because they're gonna have to pay an attorney to deal with foreclosing on the property or pay an attorney to deal with the refinance, refinance of that mortgage. All of these things cost money to the bank. They don't want to waste money on that if somebody's paying the mortgage. Right. So, um, so in my experience, everybody is concerned about it. And I always counsel my clients, you need to be aware of it. You need to know it exists, but, and be prepared for it. But what typically happens most of the time, it could take months or years for the bank even to realize it. People ask, yeah. well, how does the bank find out? So when you take this property subject to, you're going to tell the insurance company, I'm now an insured on this property. Add me as an insured. So when the insurance company adds you as an insured, they're going to notify the mortgage company that there's now a new covered person on this insurance policy. Right. And that's how the bank finds out. So it'll take time for them to catch up. So even if the bank says, you know what? I want to recall this note. Pay me in full or let's refinance. It's not going to be immediate. They're not going to say to you, you have one week. It's going to take yeah. months. It real, realistically, it's going to take several months for the process to go through. And in that time, you'll go find somebody else to refinance the property for you, or you'll find another bank to give you a loan, or you can use private money. There's all kinds of private money sources to be that short-term fix, to just get the property refinanced in your name. So it's, there's nothing to panic there. It is legal. Here's the, the area where you can kind of tiptoe into the criminal world. If you are um, dealing with bank documents and you're signing anything, it, you know, any sort of legal document, it is very important that you're honest and upfront on all legal documents. If you lie on any legal documents about the status of the mortgage holder, or you as the owner, you know, then you're talking about fraud. Okay? Or if you forge the seller's name on anything, or if you pretend to be the seller so that you can keep that mortgage, that's when you're going to get into the criminal world. Mm. Wow. Yeah, I haven't saw them uh, called a loan. Do I've been buying them subject to for about 14 years, but we put them in a land trust. So we never had any problems so far now i know if one time we had to do a modification on a property and we had it in the um, land trust the bank had us to take it out the land trust put it back in the seller name then we got it modified then we put it back in the trust now when you so which is a great tool so when you purchase it in a land trust who do you use as the beneficiary is it your llc yes yeah so that's great Okay, very smart tool because now you're the land trust is creating the privacy and it typically will not will help the bank um, keep status quo. And then your LLC being the beneficiary is what's giving you the liability protection. If there was a problem. Somebody got injured at the property. Now, I had a student ask, ask me, um, what do you what do you? How do you know if a lender allows subject to? So you have to look at the mortgage document. I, I will tell you, I don't know any lenders who will not have the due on sale clause in there. They're always going to have it in there. That's You're that's right. how they protect themselves. Um, I've never seen a bank not have one. 
Right. Um, so it is in the language in there in, ter- in, the, in the term section. Um, the other thing too is keep in mind, there are some mortgage companies who will not lend out commercially. So if you um, are, you know, the seller has it in their name, the bank is in their name, the mortgage is in the personal name. Now you as the LLC comes in and, and buy subject to, and now that the, and now the bank sees that a, an LLC owns the property and they don't offer a commercial loan product. When you own property in an LLC, you need a commercial loan product. They will oftentimes then recall. So mm-hmm. for example, um, Wells Fargo, Wells Fargo, to my knowledge, last time I checked in New York, I could only speak in New York. I was doing research for myself. They don't offer a commercial loan product. So if if the property is owned in an LLC, if I transfer it from personal name to LLC, I have to be ready for them to recall that note. Mm, yeah, they see in an LLC. That's yes. probably a, definitely a red flag. Right, right. But like you said, if the if the land trust owns it. It doesn't. It doesn't send up any flags. Yeah, it doesn't trigger to do on sale. The of the land trust will be the LLC. Right, because anybody can put their property in a land trust, so that's not illegal. Right. Make sure you guys realize that it's not illegal to put your house in a land trust. No. But if they do see it transfer to like an LLC or somebody else's name, then you may have a problem. Correct, and the land trust is also keep in mind a fantastic estate planning tool, also. Yes. Because, it's, you know, if something happens to you as the uh, owner, if it's in a trust, it automatically passes to your beneficiary, whether it be your, your LLC or your family or your personal family trust. And that way your family or your business partners or whoever else, you know, is controlling your business doesn't have to deal with going to probate for it. Right. That could be a headache. Yes. <laughs> So especially, especially if your uh, the rental income is what feeds your family, right? Yeah. Yeah, that, it's a big difference. Yeah. So it's really important. I'll tell you this, and I'm sure you do it this way too. When you're buying subject to, make sure you get um, uh, an authorization, a power of attorney, something from the seller to that allows you to communicate with the mortgage company. So that right. if you have any questions about this mortgage, you can call and ask. If you want to, you know, figure out where to send payments or refinance or do something, you know, if you call up in your name and not the seller, they're not going to talk to you about the seller's mortgage. No. Nope. So make sure that the subject to package that you're using, the documents, includes that authorization or power of attorney. Yeah, we like to do both. Mm-hmm. Is that power attorney? You can sign documents on there with hell. Yes. That power attorney, but if you don't have it, guys, don't try it. Mm-hmm. Now, but make I- sure you 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 that if you're one of our students, that's part of your package. So okay. that's mandatory, and we get a, a, a copy of their license also. Have you ever done a subject to as the seller? No, heck no. <laughs> I was just curious. Uh, <laughs> Some people, some people, you know, will sell sell their rights and wholesale subject to. Now, I have wholesaled a couple of subject to some to some investors. It needed a lot of work. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, all these different options, and but yeah, not, not, but not one that I've purchased like in my name when it got a loan for. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't give up that much power. <laughs> not if I got a loan in my name for the property. Right. Right. Most people that are willing to do the subject to are just trying to avoid foreclosure on their credit history. They don't want to ruin their um, their credit history. They have no equity in the home. They just need to get out. And they realize that the only way to make any money is to is to basically sell their their right of mortgage. Yeah. But it helps them in the long run. Once you go start making the payments and stuff, it. If they're making payments on their other stuff, you know, to boost their credit up, back Absolutely. up. Absolutely. One, yeah, it is a win-win oftentimes for them. And one thing we also do, too, we put them in a credit repair program. So help them get back on track. So they're usually back on track. We got a really good lady, too, if you need her. But she usually have, she can, 
<laughs> she's awesome. That's, that's all great. I can say. She can take that's bank. A, that's bank an awesome she's, service. It's, 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 yeah. So they're, they're pretty happy. We put them in that credit repair. They're usually back up and running in about two to three months. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. All right, Jesse. Well, thanks a lot for everything. Happy to happy to help out. And um, yeah, if any other questions come up, you know where to find me. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye.